Hello and welcome back to another lazy lesson. Today we shall be discussing about the coastal regulation zone rules. These rules are back in focus because of two main news items recently. First one is the recent demolition of illegal apartment buildings in Kerala and secondly relaxation of these rules for blue flag beaches. So dear friends in today's discussion we shall understand what are these rules, what are the significance, overview of 2018 rules and overall concerns associated. Let's have a look. So first of all, what are these CRZ rules? Basically, these are the rules which are prepared and made by the central government but implemented by respective state governments with the help of coastal zone management authorities. Besides, the states are also supposed to frame their own coastal zone management plans in accordance with the central rules. See, secondly here, these rules have been mandated under the Environment Protection Act of 1986. So with powers granted under this act, the central government framed these rules for the first time in 1991. Now what is the basic objective of these rules? So basically these rules govern human and industrial activity close to the coastline. Why? It is because to protect the fragile ecosystems near the sea and other ecosystems. In simple terms, these rules seek to restrict certain kinds of activities like lodge constructions, setting up of new industries, storage or disposal of hazardous materials, mining within a certain distance from the coastline. Now why especially these zones need protection? Here the basic understanding is that areas immediately next to the sea are extremely delicate and home to many marine and aquatic life forms. Hence they need to be protected against unregulated development. So this is why the CRZ rules are required. Now what is the definition of a regulation zone as per these rules? Here it is the area up to 500 meter from the high tide line. Now you might want to ask what is high tide line and what is low tide line? Here imagine the high tide line and uh, low tide line as two different lines within which the water line varies. Technically speaking high tide line is defined as the line of intersection of the land with the water surface at the maximum height reached by a rising tide. So similarly, the low tide line is the limit up to which the lowest low tide reaches during spring tide. This essentially means that the CRZ rules framed by the center are applicable only between high tide line and up to 500 meter from the high tide line. Several kinds of restrictions apply here depending on criteria such as the population of the area, the ecological sensitivity, the distance from the shore and whether the area had been designated as a natural park or wildlife zone. In fact, in the last 28 years, these rules have been modified for nearly 34 times, making it the most amended law in the history of India. The recent modification was in the year 2018 and this was based on the recommendation of Shailesh Nayak committee. Let us now look at the applicability of these rules. See, basically these rules cover the stretches of seas, bays, estuaries, creeks, rivers and backwaters. Now here as per the rules, the coastal zones have been divided into four categories. They are CRZ1, 2, 3 and 4 respectively. Here CRZ1 includes ecologically sensitive areas where no construction is allowed except activities for atomic power plants and defense. This includes ecologically sensitive areas like mangroves, coral reefs, biosphere reserves etc. Next, this second category includes designated urban areas that are substantially built up. Here, construction activities are allowed only on the landward side. Now, such areas include towns and cities that are already well established. Here, the third category is very very important. It includes relatively undisturbed areas, mainly rural areas. And here, no new construction of buildings is allowed. The only exception is that here construction of dwelling units between 200 to 500 meter are allowed. And similarly, category 4 includes the water area covered between low tide line and 12 nautical miles seaward. Here, except for fishing and related activities, all actions affecting on the sea and tidal water will be regulated. Please note here that a separate draft island protection zone notification has been issued for the protection of the islands of Andaman and Nicobar and Lakshadweep under Environment Protection Act 1986. And as per the modifications made in 2019, the third category coastal zone has been divided into two subcategories that is CRZ 3A and 3B. Here the A category areas are densely populated areas with a population density of 2161 per square kilometer. 
and this is as per the 2011 census and such areas shall have a no development zone of 50 meters from the high tide line. This was 200 meter as per the 2011 CRZ rules. And the second category that is CRZ 3B includes rural areas with a population density of below 2161 per square kilometers. And such areas have a no development zone of 200 meters from the high tide line. Along with this, the 2019 rules have also brought some other significant changes. Let us have a look. Firstly, these modifications allow some tourism infrastructure to be built in coastal areas. These include temporary tourism facilities such as shacks, toilet blocks, change rooms, drinking water facilities, etc. in beaches. Next, the procedure for the CRZ clearances has also been streamlined. As per the earlier rules, that is 2011 rules, projects located in all these zones, that is zone 1, 2, 3, 4, required the clearance certificate from the Ministry of Environment. But now, only the projects located within the areas CRZ 1 and 4 need to take the permission of the Ministry of Environment. And the power for clearances with respect to CRZ 2 and 3 have been delegated at the state level. Next, the 2019 rules provide for no development zone of 20 meters for all the islands. And this was necessary in the wake of space limitations and unique geography of such regions. And next, to address pollution in coastal areas, these rules provide for the treatment facilities. And these treatment facilities will be located in CRZ1 areas. And these rules classify few sensitive areas as critically vulnerable coastal areas. And such areas shall be managed with the involvement of coastal communities including fisher folk. Such regions include Gulf of Kambath, Gulf of Kutch, Karwar, Kundapur, Vembanad, Gulf of Mannar, among others. And most importantly, floor space index norms have been eased as per the CRZ 2011 rules. Here as per these 2011 rules, the floor space index had been frozen. But as per the latest notification, the government has decided to defreeze this floor space index. Let us understand here more about the floor space index. See, it is also known as floor area ratio. It is the maximum area that can be constructed on a plot of land. It is calculated by dividing the total covered built up area on all floors of a building by the area of the plot it stands on. For instance, if you have 1000 square feet of land on which you want to build a residential or commercial building and the FSI in your locality is 1.5, then you could build up to 1500 square feet of covered structures on the plot. Effectively, you can build apartments comprising one or two floors or a single dwelling unit on the plot but not beyond 1500 square feet. Here the constructed area shall also include staircases and other basic structures. So in total, it cannot exceed 1500 square feet. Now why do you think we need such rules? See basically here, a coastal zone is a transition area between marine and territorial zones. This includes shore ecosystems, wetland ecosystems, mangroves, mudflat, seagrass, salt marsh and seaweed ecosystems. And due to continuous onslaught on the coastal areas, the extent of mangroves, coral reefs and fish breeding have been heavily affected. And this has in turn affected the livelihood of nearly 200 million people. Hence, these rules are necessary to protect such kind of ecosystems. So, the main aim here is to ensure livelihood security of the fishing communities as well as other local communities who inhabit these areas. And not just that, these rules also conserve and protect coastal areas and promote development in a sustainable manner. However, even these rules are not free from criticisms. Various environment activists say that the notification has simplified procedures for environmental clearances and this will open up the sensitive areas to real estate agents further degrading the coasts. And they also say that the notification has failed to address few of the concerns raised by the fishermen. That's it for today. Thank you.